Auto dimensions, huh? <laughs> Never did take the time to look through this. Hey, wouldn't it be great if this guy really could explain how my car works without all that technical stuff? Welcome to Auto Dimensions, where all things are possible and you can see your car as never before. As your guide, I'll do my best to help you to understand your car's systems. All these systems, electrical, ignition and fuel, cooling, steering and suspension, brakes, and preventive maintenance to keep all those systems in good shape. And choosing your service partner for the checks, adjustments, and repairs you can't do yourself. Well, great, but uh, all I really know about my car is how to drive it. I mean, everything else is pretty much a mystery to me. What's worse is I got this uh, know-it-all neighbor. I've seen him. And he's got this brother uh, who runs a garage. Yeah. yeah. Well, George, what you really need is to know more about your car. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. But uh, like I said, my car is a mystery to me. So where do I begin? We'll begin right here. See, our goal is to view all these dimensions for a complete view of how your car operates. Of course, even though we see each system separately, they work together so that your car runs smoothly and efficiently. So where we start is up to you. Well, uh, how about electrical? Okay. The electrical system. It generates and harnesses electrical energy, electricity needed to run the engine, and much more. Well, hey, uh, even I know my car uses both fuel and electricity. Well, that's right, George, but each is supplied by a separate system. Let's take a closer look at just the electrical system. seen a battery that big before well you said anything's possible in auto dimensions well George the battery is where your car stores its electrical energy how chemical action that's so now you wouldn't do this at home but just for demonstration purposes let me show you what are those things lead plates lead makes electricity not by itself George we need two other ingredients water and Sulfuric acid, which is a powerful acid and can cause serious burns if it touches the skin. This mixture of water and acid is called electrolyte. It chemically reacts with the lead plates to create... Hey, electricity. Or what happens if this liquid, this uh, electro... Uh, electro... Uh, you can just call it battery fluid, George. Okay, what happens if the battery fluid uh, leaks out or evaporates? Then what? Well, then no more electric power. Fortunately, most car batteries today don't need periodic refilling like older ones. But it's a good idea to have your battery checked when you take your car in for service. That makes sense. But doesn't it get weaker as the electricity gets used by the car? Uh-huh. As electric current flows out, the battery gets weaker. Well, then what keeps the battery from getting too weak to be any good? Well, as the engine runs, the electrical system puts energy back into the battery. To do that, the system uses another basic component called the alternator. Come on. The alternator produces electric current, but only when the engine is running. It's driven by that belt. When the engine stops, the belt stops moving. And the alternator stops producing current. The alternator is connected to the battery, which stores the electrical energy. That's called charging the battery. I get it. Does the alternator's voltage change when I drive at different speeds? Well, good question. To make sure the battery gets consistent voltage, the alternator has a built-in voltage regulator. It works as a control to prevent overcharging the battery. So then if I do have an electrical problem, it's not necessarily the battery. 
the alternator or the voltage regulator might be goofed up. Right again, George. But you can avoid problems if you keep the entire electrical system in good condition. Okay, but how do I get my engine started in the first place? Does the battery do it? Well, I think you can get your answer with these. Keys? <laughs> okay, where's the car? Right in front of you. Go ahead, turn the key. Hey! That's the sound of your starter motor. It's what really gets the engine moving. It runs on electricity. So then the battery doesn't start the engine, it starts the starter motor. When you turn the key, a switch sends electric current from the battery to the starter motor, which then turns the engine. The engine only needs a few turns to get started. Well, what keeps it running? Well, that's part of the ignition and fuel system. That belongs to another dimension, so be patient. There's still a little more to know about the electrical system. Take a look at this. Wow, all those wires. Now, I know they must carry current, but where do they lead? Well, that depends. Your car's electrical system is a lot like your own nervous system. Each wire carries current to components that need electrical energy to operate. Let's look at the headlight circuit, for example. Turn on the switch, and current flows into the individual headlights. Okay, that's the headlight circuit. But what about all the other things in my car, like the, uh, the wipers, the turn signals, the radio? Do they each have their own circuit, too? Yes. So, each circuit has its own switch to turn it on and off. And when it's on, the current flows through the circuit wires to whatever part I want to work. Right, George. Now, let's go. Go? Go what? <laughs> How'd we get here? Don't tell me. Anything's possible in auto dimensions. Hey, that's the uh, instrument panel. Yep, and it's part of the electrical system you see most often. The switches are grouped together so that they're easy to reach. Let me show you how much your car relies on its electrical system. The electrical system also has warning lights to tell you about the engine temperature, oil pressure, and battery charging. Speaking of warnings, let me show you something important. Well, what's that on the battery? That's corrosion, George. It's something like rust, and it can lead to problems in current flow. Corroded connections can cause lights and other electrical equipment to behave intermittently or even fail. Well, well, don't keep me in the dark about all this. Uh, tell me, what can I do to keep my electrical system in good condition? Well, there are three simple checks you can make. One, check for any corrosion, primarily on the battery posts and cables. You can clean the posts with a battery post cleaning brush, available at auto supply stores. Two, check battery fluid level, or have it checked when you take your car in for service. Three, check the alternator belt for tightness and wear. Remember, the alternator keeps the battery charged. Whoa, one, two, three. That's simple enough. Sure is. But remember, a simple inspection is the best way to keep the electrical system in good shape. In a quality service facility, a certified technician can check the entire electrical system. The battery and charging systems are checked for proper operation. And the technician looks for damage and corroded connections. Sometimes even the battery's platform gets corroded. So the technician makes sure the battery is secure, not wobbling around. Various belts are checked for loose, worn, or cracked condition. Wiring is inspected and tested for proper current flow. And the alternator, voltage regulator, and starter motor are all checked for proper operation. So there you have it, George, your electrical system. Well, you know, that wasn't as hard as I thought it'd be. Well, you've learned a lot about how your electrical system works. But when problems do develop, Take your car in for professional inspection and service. Oh, I will. Well, what's next? How about your ignition and fuel system? The ignition and fuel system's basic job is to provide fuel to the engine and ignite it to keep the engine running. Sounds complicated. Well, not if we take it one step at a time. Ready? Lead on. Here's a good place to start. Okay, now I know I have to turn the key to start the engine. And the ignition and fuel system keeps the engine running. To do that takes three basic things.